From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook Theodore the Great, Conservative Crusader by Daniel Ruddy, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com. Bonnie Tyler's mega-hit from the 80s, Total Eclipse of the Heart, went to number one Monday on iTunes. But now she's back down to number 6,837. Sorry, Bonnie. A survey says one in four people believe robots would make better politicians than people. Who did you vote for? I voted for the Trump Bot 3000. The U.S. Secret Service is reportedly going broke protecting the Trumps. The agency can no longer pay the hundreds of agents it needs to carry out the expanded protective mission, in large part due to the sheer size of President Trump's family and efforts necessary to secure their multiple residences up and down the East Coast. And what about uh, Eric and Tiffany? I think a couple of mall cops would probably be fine for those two. A government employee in China has resigned after it was revealed that for the past two years he was pulling paychecks at another job while he was on paid sick leave. The former employee went on sick leave in June 2015, soon after he began working full-time as a manager at a restaurant. It truly is sad, though, you know, to see how much the West has corrupted the Chinese people. Game of Thrones fans are complaining that the latest episode pushed the boundaries of believability. R really? <laughs> Isn't this the same show that has dragons? Down in Arkansas, while going through a bag of donated clothing, a Blessed Sacrament worker found something she was pretty sure was not supposed to be there – a loaded handgun. The weapon was discovered in a plastic sack of donated clothes, according to the initial incident report. The silver and black 9mm handgun had 10 rounds in the magazine. Police checked to see if it had been stolen, but it had not. Officer John Shipman then attempted to call the woman who had dropped off the clothing but was unsuccessful. So the gun sits in the evidence room for now. Can you still call yourselves Goodwill if you're taking in handguns? In New Hampshire, 61-year-old Leslie Kahn found herself trapped in her own swimming pool after the ladder broke, so she turned to the loving arms of Facebook for the rescue. She told reporters, I had one foot on the ladder and when I put my other foot on it, it went down, and I cracked my knee. She didn't have the upper body strength to pull herself out, nobody else was home, and her phone was inside. With few other options, Khan used a pool pole to drag the chair her iPad was on toward her and posted in a community Facebook page asking for help. She said she labeled the post 911 to get people's attention. A woman who lived nearby showed up, followed by police and a neighbor. Her rescuers put a stepladder in the pool, and Mrs. Khan climbed right out with her sense of humor intact. She says people keep saying, I bet you can laugh about it now. I was laughing about it then. What else can you do? A judge in India has ruled a woman can divorce her husband because he refused to install a toilet in their home. The judge said that forced outdoor defecation is a form of torture and that the woman who's in her 20s has a right to a toilet. The judge noted that women in Indian villages often wait until sunset to answer nature's call. This is not only a physical cruelty but a violation of the modesty of a woman. It can also be dangerous after dark. Outdoor defecation in India is a major health threat that has prompted a government campaign to ensure an indoor toilet in every household by the year 2019. The woman's husband said an indoor toilet was not an issue when the couple married five years ago, but the woman's lawyer said he refused repeated demands, prompting her to file for divorce two years ago. It's like the guy enjoys his woman smelling of eau de toilette. The average adult now has 37 online accounts, but uses just five passwords to keep them secure. And one in four people use a single password for most of their accounts. Well, of course, you know, because the password's easier if you only have one to remember. I mean, for example, I use password123 for everything. That way I won't forget it. And it's so simple, nobody's going to ever guess it. Helena, Montana has removed a memorial to Confederate soldiers. Meanwhile, Hannah, Montana continues to go south unabated. 40% of couples save their most important conversations for the car, according to Sheila's Wheels, a British insurance company. 
Why? Well, there are fewer distractions. And get this, 20% of women have so little face-to-face -face contact with their partners that they primarily use text messages to communicate. Post-it notes are another favorite way for 10% of women to communicate with a husband, with 1 in 14 using email. You know, my bride and I will email each other while we're both in the same house. And as for having important conversations in the car, so true. Uh, personally, though, I don't think it's because the distractions are minimalized. I think it's because she knows that at 60 miles per hour, I can't jump out of the car if I don't like what she's saying. Many believe wealthy people are liars and cheaters, and now scientists have proof that it's true. In a bizarre study, researchers concluded that rich folks are more likely to lie, cheat, steal, and break rules than poorer people. Even worse, like Michael Douglas's cheating Wall Street stockbroker Gordon Gecko, rich folks think greed is good. We found that it's much more prevalent for people in the higher ranks of society to see greed and self-interest as good pursuits," says Paul Piff, the head of the study conducted by the University of California at Berkeley. In one of the study's tests, researchers found that richer folks were more likely to cheat at an online game to win $50. In another, fat cats driving luxury cars were more likely to cut off motorists at a four-way intersection than drivers of cheaper vehicles. One thing scientists did not find out was, do people become wealthy because they break the rules, or does having wealth make you lie and cheat? Says Piff, it seems like a vicious cycle. Now, personally, I, I think I would be the exception to this rule. In fact, if you want to give me a non-refundable $10 million, I would be happy to prove it. If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. If you'd like to become an official weirdo, simply click that subscribe button and notification bell. And while you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you're a weirdo.